will talk about Port CDM, and Port CDM stands for Port Collaborative Decision Making, but I will refer it to it as Port CDM. Um, I will, this is something we've been working on for a long time, and uh, I will show you a movie. So the first movie today, I think, uh, with a history about Port CDM. And this is the story about Port CDM, from idea to sustainable innovation. Since 2005, different aspects of collaborative decision-making were developed in different modes of transportation. Combining all of this knowledge with digitization strategies and by putting the port as the hub in the transport ecosystem, the Port CDM concept was born. The world of transport is facing a change empowered by digitization. Loads of challenges and opportunities arises, and the key to gain benefits from all this is collaboration. From 2013 and until today, the Port CDM concept has been defined and validated in nine ports all over Europe. The concept was continuously redesigned and co-produced together with stakeholders acting within and around the port. To ensure a transformation towards the future vision, making Port CDM a sustainable innovation, key enablers were established and developed, such as an international Port CDM Council, a living lab approach for sustainable actor collaboration, an internationally recognized standard for data sharing, a Port CDM maturity model to facilitate Port CDM compliance and interfaces to ensure low barriers for third-party innovation. The vision of Port CDM unfolds the transport ecosystem, acknowledge the global nature of transports, avoiding sub-optimization and facilitate collaboration through information sharing. Port CDM is all about sharing data and benefits among involved stakeholders, cargo owners and passengers, regardless of the mode of transportation. With the Port CDM concept, the future is today, and closing the loop in the transport chain. So this is some of the projects we've been working on with the Port CDM and the ideas behind it. So in the Mona Lisa and the STM project, we were refining it and evolving it, and now we're working with it in STEAM. It's sea traffic management in Eastern European Mediterranean and it's in Cyprus. We also have some of the ideas in a real-time ferry project, and we're also looking into the Swedish railroad, how we can improve the data sharing from the different stakeholders within the railroad in station CDM. So, this is a picture I always show when I'm coming to a port. Because when I worked in ports 11, 10, 9 years ago, this is how it looked like, and it still looks like this today. You have uh, isolated islands between the actors and unstructured information sharing. There's like no shared situation and awareness. There's a low predict predictability, and there's a lack of standards. People phone each other, they sometimes even send faxes, and they also send emails to each other. And then it's easy to miss information about the port calls. So the things we want to do is to go from this spaghetti structure to a more uh, structured information sharing of real-time data of the port calls with uh, standardized timestamps. And why? Because if you're going to increase the coordination in the port, you need to have a good data sharing uh, between the different actors. And we prefer it if it could happen from their own system instead of creating a new system. So the people, when they know they're doing a change in their terminal operating system, the information will go to everyone who needs it in the port call. But even if you have a good port coordination, you need the ships to be connected if you're going to have a good synchronization. And when you have that, you can also start connecting the ports with some information. You don't want to exchange every information. But that would also enable, if you use standards, you can start sharing with the hinterland transportation as well. And then you can connect the whole chain of logistics. 
So, what is Portsidem? It's based on three foundations. Uh, we take the vessel or the ship, making a visit to a port for a certain purpose, and then we combine multiple uh, data sources. And uh, we also synchronized involved actors' uh, how do they, conception of different timestamps. Because when you come to a port, we gather people in different ports and ask, when they talk about ETA, they have different opinions what an ETA is. For the port authority, it could be the estimated time of arrival to birth, and then the terminal says, no, but that's ETB. And the ship maiden says, no, but we always talk about ETA to the pilot station. So the thing with the standards we're using, it's always ETA to what? Or estimated time or actual time of a service that's gonna be commenced or completed. And then evaluating the likelihood that an event will occur, occur when it's planned. So we also have indicators telling people, hey, you, the terminal, the ship agent, the port authority, you have different perceptions of when this service is gonna take place. And that is based on creating, we heard situational awareness on ships, but among port collectors, we say. And then also, how do we associate the different timestamps from different systems to the same port call? Because in one system, it has this ID. In another system, it has this ID. So we create these belong to each other, to the same port call. And then this is also expected to result in a basis for just-in-time operations and better efficient capacity utilization and uh, also better just-in-time arrivals for the ships and also the departures so the shipping lines can plan their, manage their fleet in a better way and also as a basis for port-to-port -port collaboration. And also I should say that all ports are different. And you have different ports have reached different far in when it comes to digitalizations. Of the nine, sp nine ports we worked with in the port CDM in the sea traffic management project, we had ports that didn't have any systems at all. They wrote down the estimates on a piece of paper in graphite pen. And then when what's an actual, they wrote it in ink. So we created this framework or the maturity model to enabling the port to set, to set ambitions and evaluate the conditions for the port to implement port CDM. And also identify and communicate what internal and external actors can expect and make it also easier for the system providers. How can we create a connector and what kind of information do the actors want to share? And then you have this maturity level. So some ports will be in step one, some ports will be start at step three, etc. And we also realized if this is gonna be something after the project, we can, we need to create sort of a global governance. So we created the International Port CDM Council because we want actors and uh, International Port CDM Council to govern the standard that we produced and also the concept so it will also evolve afterwards that someone takes care of it and the IPCDMC has 40 plus members and 35 plus followers and it's all from ports to uh, national maritime organizations, shipping lines and different other organizations as well. And we also put it on, we say, global level because we want, it's 3,600 ports around out there and it should be able for everyone. And Port CDM, the IPCDMC also helps like ports on a local cluster and regional and global. And this is the, the how do you say, the arrow on the top is what we worked in in the project level. 
So we created this uh, port called message format that now has evolved into a standard for sharing timestamps because we didn't find a standard that could handle both the estimates and the actuals for the different operations and the locations. We created a port called Process Ontology because we also realized all ports work differently and the port call works differently in the ports, but we created a generic one and then in every port we went to, we created an, an ontology for that port because you share different times and you have different things that is that you need to work amongst. And then the living lab approach. For us, when we gather the different actors involved in port calls, uh, it was the first time they were sitting together. They'd been calling each other and emailing each other for years, but they never met in some times. So that's also good because then you can start talking. What kind of information can I share with you and what can I expect from you and how do we do it? And we also created some digital service for situational awareness that is available, that people can download and look how, does, how is this built and just to help and to make it easier for third party innovations. So we, we have, we call it, we lower the, lower the threshold and have a susta sustainability level. Now it's out there in, in different ways for people to use. And also the principle for collaborations. So what are the next steps? You have the International Port CDM Council. They will facilitate an emerging Port CDM ecosystem of users and service providers. They will refine and adopt the Port CDM maturity framework and also the S211 standard. It's, it's an IALA standard. And they will establish, establish regional port CDM councils for regional governments within IPCDMC. And there are business opportunities for everyone. So when we talk about port CDM, we had some people think this will take the business away from ship agents, for example. But we had a lot of ship agents within the project as well, and they saw benefits for them. They don't have to chase the information all the time, and when they can get some information easier than making all these phone calls, they can also produce better service to their clients, the shipping line or the charters. There are benefits for the shipping lines and for the terminals. The terminals will better know when is the ship coming, when is there any other things, services that will happen, because sometimes in a port, the terminal says, when I worked as a ship agent, like, okay, four hours paperwork afterwards. And then suddenly uh, a lube oil car, car arrived and the ship was gonna have lube oil. I as a ship agent wasn't informed. That was something that uh, the shipping line had ordered. But they come and it takes another hour, couple of hours which delays the ship and the, the terminal planned for taking another ship. And if they can see that they can also either prevent it or say, can you come earlier? Because then you will have time during the paperwork. And this is what I had, so thank you.